What's up everybody and welcome to today's edition of Tool Duel. We're going to post all the specs and the cool features of each tool, but I want to know in the comment section below, which tool do you like the best? Which one has the coolest features and what would you change? I want you all to decide the winner between the two of these tools. Now with that being said, let's take a look at the two tools that will be competing in the Tool Duel. So today we are looking at the D-handle Milwaukee Jigsaw and the Barrel Grip. Had a couple people ask me if I'd do this and I said, I eat. Now if you've never seen a tool duel from the tool review zone, it's pretty simple. We're not actually going to run these tools. We have independent reviews for each one of these jigsaws. I will put a card up above for you to check them out. Now what we will be doing, however, is looking at all the features of each tool to see which one fits you better than the other. I will put both of these saws in the description below with the link for you to check out on your own. But first we're going to look at the D-handle. $199 for the tool only. Now I usually don't put the price in the review videos, but for the tool duels I do because I don't know, that plays a big factor. Now how about the weight on the D-grip? Well you're looking at 4.85 pounds. So it's not the lightest saw out there on the market, but I will tell you it is built extremely solid. It feels really, really good in the hands. I love the feel of this saw. Well, what about the specs you ask? Well, here they are. Voltage, 18 volt, the M18. Strokes per minute, up to 3,500. Blade tight, T-shank, and the stroke length, one inch on a D-handle. You also have the detents at zero degrees, 15 degrees, 30, and 45 degrees on this saw. Now, on the battery itself, goes in the back, stays out of the way. You can go from a 5AH all the way up to the 12AH. You're going to add a couple pounds with the 12AH. But either or, you can run any M18 battery in this saw. How about orbital action? Well, you got four different modes on this. Zero is off. You got one, two, and three. The orbital action on this is a boost. If you look at the video review that we did for this, it ate through wood like nothing. It was hungry for it. It was very, very impressive, very powerful indeed. Now, what about the blade release? Well, you know how Milwaukee likes to do it. They put it right up in the front. Real easy motion here, holds that blade in there super tight, don't have to worry about sticking your hands in there and turning that. Real nice and easy, real nice solid grip on that. Now you also have the blower option where you can shut it off simply by moving the switch back and forth. If you shut that blower off, well that dust collector is going to work a lot better. You also can put a shield up in the front. The dust collector, that piece goes right here in the back. I'll show you the difference between this and the barrel grip. The one on the D handle, much, much shorter. There's a reason for it, but real easy to put in. Actually, it uh, does a half decent job when it takes that dust up and brings it into the vacuum when you have that shield up in the front. If you don't want to use that option, well, you can always use the built in blower. That thing takes that debris and just pushes it out of the cut line. And you also have an edge guide right here that you can put that in, screw it down. And it's good to go. Now you got the LED light right here in the front. As soon as you pull that trigger, it turns on, stays on for about 10 seconds. You also get the no more removable pad here. And I'll be honest with you, for some reason, the no more pad on this one, it scraped and scratched a lot easier than just about any other jigsaw that I've used. Not really sure if the plastic is just a lot softer on this. I'm, I'm complexed on that. But either way, you get it, you can take it off. Now the coolest feature right here, if I want to do a bevel, I get a 45 degree left or right. All I got to do is take that lever, pop it out. And I got those detents right here. I just find the degree that I want, slide that back in, and then close that lever up again. Now I've heard a couple people say that that's not a big deal for them. They really don't use bevels when they're cutting with their jigsaw. Well, I do. I'm sure other people do. If you do need to cut a bevel, very, very simple. Again, you just slide that out, find the degree that you want lock it down in and it's ready to cut takes about two seconds now if this is an important feature to you you might want to look at the barrel grip because it's a lot different than the d-handle that we're looking at right now now we do have a lock button right here up on the top and we do have a variable speed trigger the speed trigger on this very very smooth action i'll let you hear it here in about two seconds but it just feels really great you can start out really slow you can rev that bad boy up up to 3500 strokes per minute again it'll slice and dice through anything again i love 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 the feel 
on this saw. I don't know what it is. I guess I'm just old school when it comes to the D handles and the way these things feel, but really heavy duty. Love that over mold on the top, slip resistant. It's a well built machine. All right, now I'm going to let you hear what that variable speed trigger sounds like. Such a beastly, beastly machine. And yes, again, you can put any battery on here. That's what it looks like with the dust collector on. There's the 9.0 on there. Let's pop the 12.0 on the back here. Now it's going to add some weight. I really don't think you need all that much, but, you know, to each your own, I guess. The 5.0 is more than enough for this saw. But just in case you're wondering, you can put the 9.0 and the 12.0 on the barrel grip. You do get an inch and a half of clearance. From your workpiece now this saw the barrel grip runs 199 same price as the d handle the specs pretty much the same 18 volt m18 strokes per minute 3500 t shank blade stroke length one inch now as far as it goes with the detents same thing you can go to 0 15 30 45 might not be as easy to change this one though i'll show you here in a bit 4.5 pounds without the battery for this saw by the way it's a little bit lighter, but not much. It's definitely longer. It doesn't set up as high as the D handle, though. You also get the four orbital action here. The zero is off. One, two, and three. Again, beastly, beastly machine when you got that full bore. Here's the blade release and install right here. Just like on the D grip, you'll see a lot of similarities, but there's going to be a lot of difference as well. Super simple to get those blades in and out. No worries there. Again, you have the blower on and off right here. You can also put the shield up in the front that'll help you prevent that dust from blowing all over the place pull those into the vacuum now the attachment for this you'll see it's a little bit longer check this out it has to be look how long that saw is definitely a lot longer than the d-grip have to say i thought this was going to get in my way but it hasn't really been an issue you definitely have enough room for your hand to get up underneath there now again they don't work perfectly when it comes to dust collection but it is what it is you can also put your guide fence right here I get this screw it down same as the D handle and that's basically where the similarities stop other than this removable shoe which I'm gonna show you this is where you're actually going to adjust your bevel you don't have that lever like you did on the D handle you get a little Allen wrench right here this is how you're gonna actually adjust your bevel 45 degree either way now again you're gonna have those detents but what you're gonna have to do is turn this over you have to remove that shoe you're gonna have to loosen up that Allen bolt right here once you get that a little loose now you can adjust it to whatever degree you want but it's gonna be a lot slower than what it's gonna be on the D handle where all you gotta do is turn that lever slide it where you want it and then lock it up again you're actually going to have to take out that tool you're going to have to take off that shoe you're going to have to release the bolt you're going to have to adjust it to where you want it tighten it back up put the shoe back on and then put your allen wrench right back where it needs to go i'm curious to know if that's a deal breaker for you if it is put a comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about that now another thing that you're going to have here other than the trigger, yes there is no trigger on the barrel grip, is this adjustable lever. It's going to go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then an A. This is probably one of my favorite features out of both saws. You can start out extremely slow just like you could with the variable speed trigger but what I really like about this is when you put this on A which stands for auto it'll actually start out very slow and depending on how hard you push how hard the material is it will actually determine how much more power it needs and start to power up on its own what's really nice about this is if you're starting out a cut it'll start out again very slow and rev up on its own you don't have to worry about doing it itself i actually leave this on auto all the time now another difference between this and the other saw is the on and off you're not going to push a button you're not going to pull a trigger you got this little switch right here if you push up on this for about 
a second or two seconds, it's going to kick on. I'll let you hear it. Now, what's really cool about that is you don't have to worry about pulling that trigger the entire time. You just turn it on, and it starts cutting. Now, when I push down on that lever, it shuts it off immediately. Again, it takes about a second for it to start up. I can move this around. Don't have to worry about pulling that trigger. If I want to shut it off, adjust my speed. All I got to do is use that lever right here, and that's it. It basically runs itself. And as far as it goes with, you know, turns and maneuverability, it is just awesome. It flies like an ice skater. It is really something else, but I love that auto feature right there. Now again, you have an LED light right here on the front. As soon as you turn that on, or even if you don't turn it on, you just put that switch up a little bit, it'll turn that LED light on. It doesn't have to be running. Another very cool feature is the actual grip that this thing has. Now I can hold it right here if I wanted to, or I can put it up here and you got these little detents here for your thumb and your pointer finger extremely comfortable and very versatile really allows you to make some really sharp turns I think this is what people really like about the barrel grip and why they go for the barrel grip over the D grip most of the time it's just because of the maneuverability and how easy it is to make those cuts with this thing but I'm curious I think each one has really good features I think this one here is lacking with the handle, but they couldn't put the handle there just because of the way it's designed. I really like that, that lever that you can open up, change your different degrees, but I also love that automatic feature. I want to know what you think. Which one do you like better? What features on these tools do you think are the best, and is one better than the other because of those features? Now, even though I am loving the barrel grip, I really do. I'm sort of old school. Again, I like the lever, even though I love that auto adjust. I really think the D handle for myself is probably the better fit. Again, I'm curious to see what you think. You choose the winner. Which one wins? The D grip, the D handle, or the barrel grip saw? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, thumbs up, subscribe. Check us out at tourreviewzone.com and come say hi to us on Instagram and Twitter. We'll be back with more reviews soon.